All right, ladies and gents, welcome to CG Reaction, and this is Why Alien Life Would Be Our Doom, The Great Filter, by the channel Kuz Gazad in a nutshell. Yeah, The Great Filter is a scary thought, but I think it's very, you know, simplest, uh, straightforward thinking that I think it might be true, and if it's true, we're screwed. Well, let's hope it's not, but yeah. Uh, this is a video from Kurz Gazakt. It's a great science channel. I love it. You know, I make I make sure I react to one video every day now. It's fun. Yeah, I've reacted to quite a few videos from this channel already. If you haven't seen that, check out the link in the description. That are, it's in there. Check out the cast for all the other playlists like Salmonella, Internet Story, and SCP, things like that. And remember, this is Kurz Gazakt video. So, you know, it might get blocked. So, I have to put checkered box in the video. But we'll see. All right, let's watch this one. Imagine NASA announced today that they found aliens. Bacteria on Mars. Weird alien fish in the oceans of Europa. And also, ancient alien ruins on Titan. Wouldn't that be great? Well, no. It would be horrible news. Devastating, even. It could mean that the end of humanity is almost certain and that it might be coming soon. Why? Why would the most exciting discovery of our lifetime be bad? Yeah, I think great filter he just means if we found life, which means there's a there's a point after that either a species goes extinct or can't move forward from that. So if there is already life in the universe, that means you know we are eventually going to reach that point. But yeah, I think look if we found life like bacteria life, I don't think that you know great filter would be applied. You know I think if there are signs of life that used to be there like if we found signs of life on mars like there used to be life here they used to be life somewhere then it's a scary thought but yeah i don't think so and if we find intelligent life like if alien visits us i think that's more scary uh, aspect because obviously they travel immense distance to come here that means they're way too advanced than us and it, it, just in our human history Whenever some humans, uh, some advanced humans uh, visited some less advanced human, it, it has never been good for the less advanced humans. So let's just say if, you know, intelligent species come here from the distant galaxies, there's a high chance we're screwed. Let us imagine the development of life from its inception to us today as a flight of stairs. The first step is dead chemistry that needs to assemble itself into self-replicating patterns, stable and resilient, but also able to change and evolve. The second step is for our early life to become more complex, able to build more complicated structures and use the available energy much more efficiently. On the next step, these cells combine to become multicellular beings, enabling unbelievable variety and further complexity. The step above sees the species evolve big brains, enabling the use of tools, culture and shared knowledge, which creates even higher complexity. The species can now become the dominant life form on its planet and change it according to its needs. First, shy attempts to leave its planet are happening. This is where we are now. It's in the nature of life as we know it to reach out, to cover every niche it can. And since planets have a limited carrying capacity and lifespan, if a species wants to survive... Well, we think it's the nature since we all only have one sample of life on the planet. All life on the planet shares the DNA. So we only have one sample of life that's on our planet. And this is how we behave. I mean, this is not a thumb rule that this is how life's going to be everywhere, but yeah. It will look for more places to spread to. So the steps above the current ones seem logical. Colonize your own solar system. Then spread further to reach other stars. To the possible final step, becoming a galaxy-wide civilization. Yeah, okay. It's very likely that this is a universal principle for civilizations, no matter where they're from. If a species is competitive and driven enough to take control over its planet, they'll probably not stop there. Yeah. So, first of all, reaching the nearest star takes 70,000 years right now. 
and i don't think that number is gonna go down that much regardless of how great technology we find people are relying on you know warp drives and things like that i don't think that's possible i think that's more science fiction thing and like, surely we can achieve that i don't think so just because maths tells us doesn't mean it is completely possible there are lots of things the math describes like this is part of theoretically this is possible but it doesn't apply to the actual physical world but you know yeah we'll see and you know the fermi paradox also that's also scary that tells us that you know uh, eventually uh, species if can colonize would, would colonize most of the planet in the world and if that's the case where are everybody and there's other argument too maybe we are there maybe we are one of those aliens that you know came to the planet and part of it so yeah i mean for me paradox is great but i think that's also one of the simplest way of seeing things i think you know if there is a life uh, it's somewhere universe is extremely big and like i said even with the current technology it takes 70000 years just to reach the nearest star so i think if there is life there it might be stranded just like we are so you know it's not just simple as that if there is a life there you know there is a probably great filter or like a fermi paradox maybe a, a, you know there is no life or maybe we are that life i don't think it's simple as that we know that there are up to 500 billion planets in the milky way at least 10 billion Earth-like planets. Many have been around billions of years longer than Earth. But we're observing zero galactic civilizations. We should be able to see something, but there's nothing. Space seems to be empty and dead. This means something is preventing living things from climbing the staircase beyond the step we're on right now. Something that makes becoming a galactic civilization extremely hard maybe impossible this is the great filter a challenge or danger so hard to overcome that it eliminates almost every species that encounters it there are two scenarios one means we are incredibly special and lucky the other one means we are doomed and practically already dead it depends on where the filter is on our staircase behind or ahead of us Scenario 1. The filter is behind us. We are the first. If the filter is behind us, that means that one of the steps we passed is almost impossible to take. Which step could it be? Is life itself extremely rare? It's very hard to make predictions about how likely it is for life to emerge from dead things. There is no consensus. Some scientists think it develops everywhere where the conditions are right. Others think that Earth might be the only living place in the universe. I don't think Earth is the only living place, but yeah, if a filter is behind us of, of all the extinction events that happened, we've never found a single evidence of any kind of species that were intelligent as humans in any dinosaur or any place. So maybe just right condition, right place is the right conditions that created us and maybe that was the great filter like that kind of condition never basically never happens that could be great filter but uh, you know i don't know i think the rarest things in the universe is not really rare since universe universe is extremely big so even the rarest things that would feel rare to us it's not going to be that rare in the universe so i don't know but filter if it is it's ahead of us that's damn scary which means there are lots of civilizations like us existed before but they couldn't pass that filter just like we are on our way to not passing that filter like we could kill ourselves with the advanced technologies you know some new like somebody creates a massive particle accelerator try to create something goes out of hand like you know like how um, you know nuclear reactor goes out of hand just like that if something like they create some kind of black hole that just doesn't go away somehow and that just sucks uh, entire planet away or something like that there's lots of possibilities there's a there's a scary saying like the last thing the human will say is a scientist saying hmm that's interesting another candidate is the step of complex animal cells. A very specific thing happened on this step, and as far as we know, it happened exactly once. A primitive hunter cell swallowed another cell, but instead of devouring it, the two cells formed a union. The bigger cell provided shelter, took care of interacting with the environment and providing resources, while the smaller one used its new home and free stuff to... Yeah, but the fact this cell did that, which means cells... Uh, would do it if there are so many cells so this is not really rare 
if there is another planet somewhere, another condition where condition like this, you know, exist, maybe one planet out of thousand would do that. And since there are billions of planets, I think this is not going to be that rare. Life must exist somewhere. The focus on providing a lot of extra energy for its host. With the abundant energy, the host cell could grow more than before and build new and expensive things to improve itself, while the guest became the powerhouse of the cell. These cells make up every animal on the planet. Maybe there are billions of bacteria-covered planets in the Milky Way, but not a single one apart from us has achieved our level of complexity. Or intelligence. We humans feel very smart and sophisticated with our crossword puzzles and romantic novels, but a big brain is, first and foremost, a very expensive evolutionary investment. They are fragile. They don't help in a fist fight with a bear. They cost enormous amounts of energy. And despite them, it took modern humans 200,000 years to get from sharp sticks to civilization. Being smart does not mean you get to win automatically. Maybe intelligence is just not so great, and we're lucky that it worked out for us. Scenario 2. The filter is ahead of us. Plenty of others died already. A great filter before us is orders of magnitude more dangerous than anything in This is what people think of when they think of the great filter, like great filter is ahead of us. Something would prevent us, like we will kill ourselves because that inevitably, regardless of where a life exists, if it gets advanced at the level we are getting, you know, it will eventually kill ourselves. Like, you know how people are fearing like nuclear bombs are that. Like we are going to kill ourselves with nuclear bombs. Maybe scientific advancement, like I said, some kind of people some mistakenly creates a black hole that swallows everything. Something like that. Encountered so far. Even if a major disaster killed most of us or threw us back thousands of years, we would survive and recover. And if we can recover, even if it takes a million years, then it's not a great filter, but just a roadblock to an eventual galactic yeah. civilization. On universal timescales, even millions of years are just the blink of an eye. If a great filter really lies before us, it has to be so dangerous, so purely devastating and powerful, that it has destroyed most, if not all, advanced civilizations in our galaxy over billions of years. A really daunting and depressing hypothesis is that once a species takes control over its planet, it's already on the path to self-destruction. Yeah. Technology is a good way to achieve that. It needs to be something that's so obvious that virtually everybody discovers it and so dangerous that its discovery leads almost universally to an existential disaster. A large-scale nuclear war. Nanotechnology that gets out of control. AI. Genetic engineering of the perfect superbug. An experiment that lights the whole atmosphere on fire. It might be a super-intelligent AI that accidentally or purposely destroys its creators. Or things that we can't even see coming right now. Or Black it's way simpler. Species competitive enough to take over their planet necessarily destroy it while competing with each other for resources. Maybe there are runaway chain reactions in every ecosystem that once set in motion are not fixable. And then so we have once fucked. a civilization is powerful enough to change the composition of its atmosphere, they make their planet uninhabitable 100% of the time. Let's hope that that's not the case. If the filter is ahead of us, our odds are really bad. What we can hope for. This is why finding life beyond Earth would be horrible. The more common life is in the universe, and the more advanced and complex it is, the more likely it becomes that a filter is in front of us. Bacteria would be bad, small animals would be worse, intelligent life would be alarming. Ruins of ancient alien civilizations would be horrible. The best case scenario for us right now is that Mars is sterile, that Europa's oceans are devoid of life, and the vast arms of the Milky Way harbor only empty oceans hugging dead continents. Yeah, I don't think that's the case. That's a simple way of seeing things. If we find a dead civilization, that's that's scary. But just finding any kind of life, I don't think that's true because, you know, uh, life began four or so billion years ago. The universe is 13 billion years old. So that's 30% of the existence. 
that's not that much if the universe was trillions of years old and we only existed four billion years ago then this fear would be there but i think this is simplest way of simple way of thinking it you know to create filter is ahead of us i don't know we'll see but i think the you know universe is so vast you know there might be life somewhere we will never know about it you know and if we find some you know cellular life here and there that doesn't mean that you know the great filter is a possibility that just means that they are behind us the, the life that is ahead of us might be even in the different galaxy it doesn't have to be in the same galaxy so i don't know about this that there are billions of empty planets waiting to be discovered and to be filled up with life billions of new homes waiting for us to finally arrive how likely is it that we'll find life outside of Earth that is similar to us? Well, that depends on how many planets there are out there in their star's Goldilocks zone, the area around a star where water can be liquid. Because stars come in all sizes and configurations, this zone is different for every star system and requires a little bit of physics to figure out. If that sounds like fun to you, this quiz from... Yeah, people, do, do, go to brilliant.org for us nutshell and support this channel. This is a great channel that ta tackles great science topics. I love it. Great filter could be true, but I feel like that is, you know, very straightforward thinking. I think it's more complex than that. So I'm not afraid of that. But yeah, that part, like we might kill ourselves is really, really true. We might nuke ourselves eventually. AI might screw us over. So yeah. All right, people, that was why alien life would be our doom, the great filter. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description, check out the castle playlist, check out the end cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.